feels responsibility um, to make sure that people, whether they're undocumented or documented, whether they're white or brown, um, have their human rights in this country. I forget about the rights people have in Mexico, and this movie really made me think about the right people have to not come to this country, um, and the right that people have to enjoy their culture and to be with their families and not get split up. So um, I just spent the summer um, in the desert in Arizona trying to provide food and water, water and medical assistance to people who are crossing the border. And I feel like a lot of my energy has been spent in EV's honor trying to make sure that people simply don't die here. But um, the movie really made me think about um, what, what can I do, what can we all do to um, make sure that people have the right to stay with their families. Um, and it's complicated for me because um, I feel like when you start talking about like um, trying to make sure people don't come here, that gets into like this weird Lou Dobbs territory of we don't want people here. Um, and so I think just seeing the movie a few days ago is starting to help me think about how we can open up those discussions in um, new ways. So yeah, the movie touched me on an emotional and personal level and also an intellectual level trying to figure out like um, me as a person of privilege, like who feels responsibility, what can I, what can I do? This idea of how you might have changed since you've come here and how you feel about going back, um, you know, we discussed is this really the answer or, or, or what does it make you feel now that you are here and in this relationship? Okay, first of all, I want to thank you for the movie, for bringing um, part of the reality because that's the way it is. Um, it's really painful, but actually it's exciting to come here and try, because that's the reason that we came here, to try. And um, it's painful because we left everything. I mean, everything. You know, I have a, I'm a son, I have my parents, and uh, I left my family. Actually, now I have my own family. <laughs> you know, as we say, valió la pena. And, <laughs> and what, yes, it was, it is. <laughs> so, but yeah, uh, it's, you know, it's, Hard, hard, like really hard for us to live everything. We just came here, but at least we try. And uh, I really like the the movie because, like, they show like, you know, like how painful it is. I think. Can I ask him a question? <laughs> is that okay? So you said Valle la Pena was worth it, but do you really? I don't know. I struggle with this, and I want to know what you think. Do you really think it was worth it to come here, like knowing what you've been through? Yeah, for me it is. For me it is, but like so for, for other people, it's not because like sometimes when the people came here, they leave everything. You know, they leave their parents, they leave the the wife, the, the kids. But like you don't really know, you know, if you're coming back, and if you're coming back, you don't really know what you're gonna find. Like maybe you're gonna miss part of your family, and you never know. You know, but for me it is because like you know I'm 20, 29 years old. And I'm, like this part of my 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 life is like I need to make my own life. I need to try like different things. You know, like I think like every like like uh, hobby. Every young yeah. person. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just nervous. Um, <laughs> like every young person, like you know, need need to try and find out their own life, their own like way. So I think my was in the beginning was hard because like when I came here, I was like I have nobody. You know, like like a lot of people, but like thanks God I found somebody to to like love me and I love the person. So yeah, like, definitely yeah, valió la pena. I hope you're not saying that just because I'm here. <laughs> um, I'd like to open it up to the audience if anyone has questions for anyone here. Yeah. My mic. <laughs> Hola. Yo soy mexicana y acabo de llegar a, a NYU a estudiar y a dar clases. ¿Qué podemos hacer para que muchas más personas vean la película? Porque ni siquiera estoy pensando en Estados Unidos, en México. O sea, en mexicanos que leemos de esto, oímos de matanzas y todo eso, de gente que muere intentándolo, pero creo que hasta que no te relacionas, que es lo que tiene como el el documental, hasta que no te relacionas sentimentalmente, no acabas de entender lo difícil que es. Y también creo que acá, de este lado, pues la gente no acaba de entender que venimos o que vienen muchos mexicanos o latinos 
porque en serio es necesario, o sea, porque de veras allá no se puede, porque de veras allá no hay oportunidad. Entonces, no sé si está en internet, si está en un torrent, si está en YouTube, si se compra, pero creo que la deberían de pasar en las escuelas. Es como todo. No, we, we are trying very hard for this movie to be seen, not only in Mexico, but in the U.S. as well. We are planning a U.S. tour of the movie for next year. Uh, and uh, it's going to be... Uh, we are starting with uh, 10 cities, 50 screenings of 2,000 people each. And it's going to be free screenings. So we are, we are, this is a huge effort that we're doing to get the money for this tour to happen so that people can see it here. We are mainly targeting the, the cities with uh, most, uh, the bigger Mexican communities. And so that actually the, the ones, not the one, those who remain, but those who came can have the experience of watching the film, and in that in that part of the, of our our project, it's very important what we're doing today here. Mm -hmm. Is in every city we are we're going to be, we want to have screenings at universities and have these kind of discussions. And uh, yes, later on we want to have the the film online uh, for a lot of people to be, to be able to see it. In Mexico, it had, we, we, we had a theatrical release last year, uh, and we were the biggest uh, theatrical release for a documentary in, Mexi in Mexican uh, history of theatrical releases of documentaries. And, uh, and we, but we, we were very, we were very concerned that when you open theatrical a movie in Mexico, you, you just started the people that can pay for a film ticket, which is a very small uh, part of the of the real families that actually live this. So what we did is we did an, a, a, a road show, a tour in 143 uh, rural towns at the same time that the film was. Uh, playing at the theaters, and those were open air screenings for free. That uh, oh, more than twenty eight thousand people saw the film that way. So we are doing, you know, this kind of. Of course, we would love every every school to have a copy of the film. Uh, we are in discussions with the people in the federal government in Mexico and also congressmen here in the U.S. and Last two weeks ago, uh, we we had an opening of exhibit of photographs of of seven different photographers that made a book about these families. That is part of our project. And the U.S. ambassador in Mexico, Carlos Pascual, was did the, the opening speech, and that was it caught a lot of attention from the media. And now we are. We are coming out with a DVD, and hopefully, this all this media, you know, brings people closer to the film. But also, to the realistic part of it is that most Mexicans that live in the city uh, would rather see other films than a documentary about uh, uh, country life, you know. And we want to change that. But it is a process. I mean, we we have spent four years uh, in this project, and still next year is full on this project. So little by little, I think we're opening new ways of having this. But it is very important for us what is happening today, because I think that this film belongs. When we were making the film, Juan Carlos and I always thought that it's very important, the most important thing of this film is to have students watch it.